Hi, uh, for those interested, I just wanted to derive these two equations. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to derive these two equations. Why is the equivalent resistance, uh, why mathematically does this equation make sense for series and this for parallel? Well, here's the thing. Remember, we said that in a series circuit, the current is the same everywhere, but the voltage has to like the voltage of the battery has to be shared between all resistors, right? So let's look at what that means, right? What that means is this nine volt battery, so we could say whatever the voltage of the battery is, has to be shared uh, between the two resistors. So if I call this resistor one and resistor two, I can say that the um, potential of the battery has to be equal to the potential of resistor one plus the potential of resistor two, right? Okay, well, we know that uh, v equals IR, so I can say that the, vo uh, the, the voltage of the battery is going to equal to the current through resistor 1 times the resistance of resistor 1 plus the current in resistor 2 times the resistance of resistor 2. Okay, uh, But we also know that in a series circuit, all elements have the same current because you can't have a traffic jam with a current in here, right? And so instead of calling these I1 and I2, I can just call them I. And then I can factor out the I. And you can see that if I define the equivalent resistance as R1 plus R2, just like I did right there, right? If I define the equivalent resistance as R1 plus R2, then I still can recover Ohm's law from this, okay? So that's why it makes sense in a series circuit. Okay, what's different in a parallel circuit? Well, in a parallel circuit, every element gets the full voltage of the battery. So I can say that voltage of the battery equals the voltage of resistor one, and it's also equal to the voltage of resistor two. But what is not equal, right? Remember what happens is the current, when the current gets to this, the, the parallel part, the current splits up. So what I can say is that the current going through the battery has to equal the current going through one plus the current going through two. So unlike here where the currents were the same, I can't say the currents are the same. I can say the voltages are the same, but I can't say that the currents are the same. Okay, so then what? Well, if V equals IR, then I should be able to say that I equals V over R. So in other words, I can say that the current through the battery is equal to the V of resistor 1 divided by the R of resistor 1 plus the V of resistor 2 divided by the R of resistor 2. But we said that these two Vs are the same. So I can just write this as V over R1 plus V over R2. Okay, and if I factor out a V, it's V times 1 over R1 plus V times 1 over R2, right? Equals the current in the battery. So just continuing this thought, right, you kind of see where this is going. You can say that if I define 1 over the equivalent resistance as 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, then I should be able to say that the current through the battery is equal to V times 1 over REQ, and then if I multiply both sides by REQ, I get that V equals I battery times REQ. And again, I can recover uh, Ohm's law, V equals IR, from that. So that's where these two come from. Uh, yeah, I hope that was interesting to you. All right, have a good one.